I'm here today at the University of Leeds with Professor John Blacker and Professor Nick Kapoor and they're going to tell you a little bit and uh, introduce you uh, to the free actors that are sent to marketing developed by the University of Leeds um, on how they work and why they exist. So I'll pass over the microphone to John. Thanks Martin. So just a little bit of um, uh, history to start with. So. Um, most people will want to do continuous flow chemistry, think of them being in tubular systems. The disadvantage of most um, tubular systems is that they're limited to single phases, so often people dilute things down so they can get them into solution so they can pump them through. The other thing is that um, the residence time within tubular systems um, is only designed for relatively fast or medium um, rates of reactions, whereas if you need long residence times, it's often very difficult. So my uh, myself and Professor Kapoor um, came up with the idea of um, a stirred, uh, continuous stirred tank system, which has been known for many years, but always they've been used at uh, large scale um, without chemists um, needing to um, have small amounts of, chemists have start small amounts of starting material. It becomes very difficult for them to use existing um, continuous stirred tank reactors. Um, so the idea of the free actors was that the scale would be much smaller, um, allow multiphasic reactions and allow long residence times as well. So I'll pass over to Professor Kapoor who's going to explain something about the design of the free actors. So thanks John. So these are the free actors. So the free actor classic which is the unit that you can see behind me. I'll just pick this off the hot plate. Actually consists of five of these. And we've designed them that way so that the reaction uh, residence time distribution, that's how long the, the uh, reactant spend in the reactor is, is um, very tight. It behaves quite like a plug flow type system. This is a single reactor. So it's been through quite a few iterations, as you well know, John, because we've dissolved a few of these and broken a few in the lab. And this is probably about the fourth generation. Now, it's actually really convenient to use. So these get plumbed together on this heating block. So we typically would plumb five of these together and each one contains an individual stirrer unit. And if I just take this single unit, I can just show you how quick it is and easy it is to uh, deal with. So you can just very quickly undo the front bolt. And you can slide the lid off and that very quickly allows you access to the inside of the reaction chamber. So the idea here is you can do multiphasic reactions and they'll run for a period of time and then you might need to take the reactors apart and just clean out the reactant. So it's a very straightforward design, um, but like I say, there's been a lot of design work that's gone into that. And our chemists have used it for all sorts of things, haven't they, John? So that's you can right, tell Nick. us about those. Yeah, that's right, Nick. So we've done um, lots of different multi-phase reactions. So liquid-liquid reactions, one of the simplest example is putting oil and vinegar together to make a vinaigrette. Um, we've done, um, because of the good mixing, we've done some very fast reactions. Um, we've done gas liquid reactions, um, so hydrogenations, for example, with a homogeneous catalyst. Um, we've also done reactions that evolve a gas during the reaction, like CO2, for example. We've done gas liquid solid reactions, um, so for instance, palladium on carbon catalyst with hydrogen gas with a liquid um, substrate. Um, with long residence time, so maybe three hours on those reactions. Um, we've done crystallizations that form a solid during the reaction or pumping through a solid into the reactor um, to actually grow a crystal as it goes through. Um, and then we've done things like biotransformations um, with enzymes or even whole cell systems. So a really broad, wide range. Now, what we're not doing is promising we'll do everything and it'll work perfectly every single time. But the idea is that it's simple enough to be able to wash and clean out if you need to, because um, eventually some things will block or things may not um, perform all the time exactly as you expect. Um, and we've designed them to be very flexible. So depending on what the chemistries are, it's designed to accommodate lots of different types of chemistries. Thanks, John. Um, we've chosen materials of construction so that they're uh, relatively resistant to most chemicals so these are peak bodies we've got glass windows in there we've got different types of seals and yeah just really flexible types of systems that we've been able to For use heating particularly heating yeah, yeah. absolutely it comes on a 
on a heating plate so we can heat this to 100 degrees C and we run this at normally up to 7 or 8 bar, 100 pounds per square inch just using a conventional back pressure regulator. Okay Martin I'm going to hand that back to you now. Thank you. Well my thanks to Nick and John, I really appreciate you filling us in on the free actors and uh, how they work in the laboratory and some of the advantages that people can't really see just by looking at them um, from, a, from an image. Uh, we've got lots more information linked through the ASIN website, and, uh, lots of information from Nick and John that uh, can help you make decisions on whether these products could be useful for you. But we're trying to base these uh, at a sensible price level that really you can start to play an experiment with flow chemistry. Anyway, thanks for watching and thank you gentlemen.